Hey everyone, my name is Megan. I am with Fantastic Fertility and I wanted to come on the live tonight to talk about how the coronavirus and the mass stress that people are experiencing um, can really be affecting people's cycles and their charts. So um, if you're new to my page, hey everyone, welcome to the call. Um, if you're new to my page, I am a certified fertility awareness educator. I teach women globally how to chart their cycles for natural birth control that's effective, reliable. Um, for anyone who wants to learn more about that, just go ahead to my link in bio and you can click that and get started to explore working with me if that's something that you want to do. Hello everyone! Thank you so much for joining. So I'd love to get started. Um, I'm just going to kind of talk through some points that I had noted, but I would also love to really turn this into a dialogue. So if anyone has questions, please um, put them in the chat below and we can go through those questions as well. And so let's get started. In terms of what's going on right now, um, I don't know about you guys, but I've been getting really, really burnt out, like, a lot on all of the um, coronavirus uh, content going around on social media. It feels um, really overwhelming. It feels kind of um, scary and things like that. And so I know if I'm feeling this way, I'm sure thousands of other people are feeling the same. And I know that a lot of people who follow me, they may be new to charting, they may have just recently started charting. Um, and this message even goes out to seasoned charters as well, because sometimes when we chart our cycles for a long time, it can actually be easy to kind of slip into these patterns of what we call rhythm method thinking, where it can be easy to kind of bank on patterns and predictions and stuff. Um, and people can actually kind of fall into that. And so I want to just um, emphasize in, in the live tonight the effects that this mass stress might have on our cycles and our charts. Okay, so Chelsea is saying, same, I'm exhausted and I've, not, I've done nothing with my days. Yeah, it's just been really um, overwhelming for a lot of people, even though a lot of us are kind of cooped up indoors, we're hanging out, the element of social isolation that's, help that's happening right now can just really make people feel lonely and even more stressed out. So let's talk about the stress. You may me, uh, see me looking down, I'm just looking at my notes. So stress can really have a big impact on our cycle. And if you don't know, our cycle, our ovulation and menstrual cycle as women, is really a barometer of our health. When there's something happening in our lives, whether it's an acute sudden stressor, like in the case of this literal pandemic that's happening right now, um, or if it's kind of a low level chronic stressor, like let's say you um, really don't like your job and every day that you go into work you're stressed out about it. That can be a chronic stressor. These things can have a really massive impact on our cycles because they impact our hormones. And our hormones are what drive our cycles and really what drive a big component of our health. And so how can this affect our cycles? How can this stress actually show up? Well, it comes in a lot of different ways. So some big ones that you want to look out for um, in your current cycle, as well as your next couple of cycles are the following. And I do say the next couple of cycles because um, for some people, again, they may not be noticing much of, a much of a change or much of a difference in their current cycle right now, but it's actually really common when you experience a stressor to have uh, cycle changes show up down the line because, um, again, that's kind of just the nature of our cycles. So let's talk about how this stuff might manifest. So number one is perhaps an obvious one, but delayed ovulation. Delayed ovulation is something that can happen um, in response to a lot of different stressors. 
but especially in terms of big stressors. Basically what's happening with delayed ovulation is the body is experiencing a lot of stress all at once and it may say, okay, things are too stressful right now. I don't want to get pregnant, so I'm just not going to ovulate. I'm going to delay ovulation. It's kind of the body's way of protecting itself because when we're in this fight or flight or freeze mode, the body's going to prioritize um, being alert and staying safe over sex and reproduction. And so it's not really going to prioritize hormonal health. It's going to it's going to prioritize like your basic life functions, like staying alive and keeping your heart beating and breathing and eating and the basic things like that. And so sometimes you can have delayed ovulation. Now, I also want to emphasize that these different cycle effects that I'm going to talk about, they may happen to you or they may not. And so something like delayed ovulation, it's never a guarantee. I want to encourage people to be charting their biomarkers really attentively in the coming weeks and months because this may be something that happens to you or it may not. Just something to be aware of and um, again, be alert but not anxious about it, okay? So that's delayed ovulation. When we have delayed ovulation, that also pushes back menstruation. Menstruation can only follow after ovulation. So if you picture it in a cycle, if you have ovulation um, that's pushed back, it's going to push back menstruation as well. So people might be hanging around saying, oh my gosh, you know, it's it's been 30 days. Where's my period? What's going on? And the beauty of charting is that we can see in real time what's happening and we can see if we're ovulating yet or not. Um, and so that's an awesome facet of charting where we don't have to stress out about a quote unquote missing period because it's not, it's never actually missing. It arrives on time when it needs to arrive, but it's always going to follow after ovulation. Okay, so that's this element of delayed ovulation. It can also, um, again, come with delayed menstruation, and that can be a whole nother anxiety thing uh, in addition. So I want people to be aware of that. The best way to know what's going on with that is to chart your biomarkers attentively. So being in tune with your cervical mucus, checking consistently, uh, taking your temperature in the morning when you wake up, and learning the method as accurately as you can, okay? Another thing that can come up, and I have seen this a lot with clients recently that I work with, is the kind of an absence of estrogenic cervical mucus. I can't tell you how many clients I've spoken with lately who will say, you know, I usually have had in the past lots of copious estrogenic mucus every cycle, and this cycle, I'm barely seeing anything. Like, what's going on? And often it's a result of stress. It's again, the body's way of coping and not really prioritizing um, sex and reproduction. It's prioritizing uh, stress and staying alert and staying alive over that. So Cece just said in the chat, <laughs> she was like this, cervical mucus, where are you at? And it's really true. It's happening to a lot of people right now. It can be confusing, but it is the result of stress often because it can, it's just impacting those hormones so much right now. So scant cervical mucus, you know, not seeing as much as you usually do, seeing patches of different cervical mucus throughout your cycle, things like that can be coming up for people right now. Another thing is wonky temperature patterns. So we're switching over from cervical mucus here. We're looking more at our temperatures. So part of charting with fertility awareness is you're looking at your basal temperature. Basically just means your core body temperature as soon as you wake up in the morning when you're kind of at like your, your coldest in terms of your body temp. The really cool thing about basal temperature is that it can tell us when we've already ovulated in a cycle. Now, it can't predict ovulation, but it does help us to confirm when it has happened, which is a really cool thing. Now, talking about these wonky temperatures, our temperatures, our basal temperatures, can be quite sensitive to stress. So I've had um, myself, actually, uh, at the beginning of this cycle, my temperatures were very wonky. They were very up and down. And when we say wonky or like crazy temperatures or erratic temperatures, it basically just means that 
the temperatures on the chart that we're seeing are really kind of jagged. They have a lot of space between them. Um, and that can make them a little bit difficult to read sometimes for people. Um, again, especially if they're new to charting or relatively new. And it can also just be confusing. Why is this happening? What's going on? And so wonky temperatures, that's another area. One thing that we can do to help with this is to get regular exercise. So keeping movement in as part of your daily and weekly plan is really important. Even something as simple as going out for a 30 or 45 minute walk or getting moderate exercise, literally just two or three or four times a week, that is kind of all you need right now to kind of keep your circulation going. And exercise is such a great thing to help our bodies, hey Caitlin, regulate our, I love you too, <laughs> regulate our body temperature. So that is a key thing that can really help. And of course, we know from all the data from decades past, uh, exercising is a great stress reliever and stress reducer. So definitely keep movement. Um, I've heard that that some countries at this point are, and I'm not sure, you know, it depends um, in other areas of the U.S. what's going on, but I've heard of some regulations lately where people um, aren't actually allowed to go outside. Uh, depending on where they live. And, you know, when we talk about exercise, maybe something that you need to do indoors, if it's possible for you to get outside. Um, I highly recommend solo hiking. I love it. It gets you out in the woods and nature um, into kind of like forest bathing, really relaxing. Um, if you're still away from other people, so you're still utilizing that social distancing that we need right now but it can really help to um, bring some peace, okay? So that's the wonky temperatures. Let's talk next about abnormal spotting. So people might experience that in the coming cycles as mid-cycle spotting, maybe around the time of ovulation, maybe they haven't had that before in the past, but now they're experiencing that. That might be a new thing. Or people might experience pre- or post-menstrual spotting that they might, have, might, they might not have had before. And so these are all different things to look out for. Um, the reason why people can experience this, again, is those fluctuations in their hormones. If you come up with some abnormal spotting, don't freak out. Um, most likely, it's something to do with hormones fluctuating. I would encourage people to continue charting, keep calm, and keep an eye on it and see what happens in the coming days. Um, for clients that I'm working with, please reach out for more support with this. I'm always happy to help there, okay? Um, next, we're going to talk about a big one, which is worsening PMS symptoms. Now, PMS can include lots of different things. For a lot of people, some of the biggest ones are acne, mood changes, things like breast tenderness, things like that. And so in this time of stress, um, especially during the luteal phase, which is when um, PMS comes up for people due to um, an imbalance with progesterone, that hormone that we see during the luteal phase that in healthy amounts is really great, but when it's too low, um, it can really affect people. And so they may experience worsened um, PMS symptoms. So I just want people to be prepared. Um, this may mean, in terms of mood changes, it may mean being a bit more mindful, um, perhaps bringing in things like meditation, other tools like grounding and kind of being in your body, um, and also just being compassionate with yourself, okay? Because we're all going through a lot of, again, mass stress right now. A lot of us are feeling very similar, um, and it, it's really hard lately. So I want to just remind people, please, please be compassionate with yourself. Cut yourself some slack. Um, know that these things will pass. Um, and, and right now, we're actually going to talk about next what to do about all this, how to manage these things, and other resources, okay? So you guys know me. I'm always talking about sleep, optimizing sleep. Um, that's obviously my first tip. Um, raise your hand in the chat box if, you know, you maybe have had trouble sleeping lately. Um, and also if you have any sleep tips, go ahead and put that in the chat as well. I would love to hear them. 
some of my biggest sleep tips you know is wearing socks to sleep it's such a great way to increase the speed of sleep onset helps to improve improve sleep quality um, and it just helps uh, people to sleep better and deeper overnight I can't tell you how many people have messaged me and have said, Megan, I saw for like months you talking about sleep socks and I never tried it. And finally one day I did and it's really working for me. Um, <laughs> this person saying I hate socks, love out loud. For some people, it completely doesn't work. For some people, they hate it. If that's you, no worries. But if you aren't sure, if you wanna try it, definitely give it a try. You never know, it might really help. And it's such a, such a simple, uh, thing to try. It's free. You have socks on hand. You simply need to put them on. Okay. Uh, Jesse is suggesting a Manta uh, eye mask to wear to sleep. Manta is a great company. It's an eye mask that kind of goes um, a little bit away from your eyes, so it's not pressing on you. And uh, I know from from people that I've heard, it's a great option as well. Um, this person is saying lavender and chamomile tea, taking GABA before bed, um, taking an Epsom salt bath with lavender. Absolutely. Anytime you can bring in herbal tea that doesn't involve um, caffeine, that is always a good move. And doing things like a hot shower or a hot bath kind of before bed, that's also been proven to um, increase sleep onset and improve sleep quality as well. So all of these different things are all about lowering cortisol, that stress hormone in our body, and kind of helping to create a nourishing, calm bedtime routine that we can kind of slip into at night, okay? I have tons of other um, suggestions when it comes to optimizing sleep. If you want to know them, you guys can just DM me. Um, or maybe I'll share them in the stories later, but I have like 30 suggestions <laughs> and uh, a lot of different things that can work. Laura is saying that the socks worked for her. Um, lavender and mint scents are also helpful as well, which is amazing. I'm really glad that that's working for you. Cool. So some other things that can help. Um, again, we talked about moving our body. Things as simple as going for walks in the neighborhood, um, hikes out in nature, um, meditation, and also things like yoga. That's something that's really accessible for people. If you have a phone with an internet connection, go on YouTube. You can find tons of different options for yoga videos. Um, oftentimes it's something that doesn't require uh, weights and yoga obviously is quite meditative. Yeah, it can also help you work up a sweat as well. So that's definitely a great option. Um, another tip, and this is kind of just a general thing, but I want it to really like resonate and hit home with people. Prioritizing self-care. So right now, you know, we're talking about it. We're talking about optimizing sleep. We're talking about um, going for hikes and walks. All of these things fall under self-care. Self-care is not just about um, baths. It's not just about um, eye masks and, or excuse me, like face masks. It's really about the work that we do as humans to nourish our bodies, keep our bodies going, and lower stress and keep ourselves healthy. So, you know, when we talk about self-care, I just, I feel like, especially in the United States, so often um, self-care is like pushed down. It's pushed down the list. It's the first thing to go when we get busy. Um, we have in the United States this intense culture of work, 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 you know, you need to hustle or else you're like you're not, or like you're useless or something. There's this like obsession with being productive. And in my opinion, it's actually really harmful because people don't really function like that. And they don't function optimally like that. They function a lot better when they have periods of rest and recharge. And so um, I, you know, again, if you follow me for a while, you know, I actively reject the hustle. I really, really believe in prioritizing our self-care. Um, and sometimes this means, you know, saying no to other commitments so that we can attend to ourselves, we can nurture ourselves, and we can uh, show up for others better and serve others better because we feel good in our bodies and we feel safe, okay? 
Um, uh, let's see, this person in the chat, she's saying yoga with Adrian is my favorite on YouTube and for meditation, insight timer is my jam. I absolutely agree with you on both counts. I love yoga with Adrian and I also use insight timer as well. Insight timer is a free meditation app. Um, I love it. I listen to like, there's this one that I listen to for sleep and, um, it's this woman with an accent. So relaxing. I like fall asleep every time. Highly recommend. So thank you for that suggestion. So we have another vote for yoga with Adrian, by the way. Definitely suggest checking her out. So the next thing on my little list for self-care is eating regular meals. Now, I know I am so um, not great at this. <laughs> I don't mean to like downplay myself, but this is something that I, I know that I struggle with myself. I can go until like 5 or 6 or 7 p.m. with barely eating anything all day. And uh, to me, I, I barely notice it, but obviously it's showing up in my, in my cycles as a stressor because that can really throw off my blood sugar. It can mess with your hormones. It can be kind of the root cause of um, disturbances in digestion as well as um, mood changes and things like that. So eating regular meals, I am not about like strict dietary guidelines, um, but I do think it's generally a good recommendation, you know, when you can cook your own food, try and eat whole foods, um, and, and try and balance your meals with um, a protein, uh, a nice fat, um, that might mean fat on the meat that you're eating, it might mean cheese or goat milk or nuts or seeds. Um, avocado oil, ghee, butter. There's so many ways to incorporate lots of beautiful fats. Um, and our hormones need that fat to manufacture themselves and to build up in healthy amounts. So balancing that out as well with other fruits and vegetables. Um, again, I know at this point in time, it can be really stressful. Um, shopping for food. I know that there's a lot of um, scarcity right now when it comes to food. So please just do your best. Um, when you go to the store, get what you can, get what you need for a couple weeks. Um, please don't hoard food so we can have enough for everyone. Um, but we also need to, you know, nourish ourselves and, and do our best with that to keep ourselves healthy. Okay. So if you're looking for more food information, highly recommend Lily Nichols on Instagram. She's incredible. She's the author of Real Food for Pregnancy. And I swear that book is like the Bible for me when it comes to nutrition advice and optimizing nutrition for cycle health. So highly recommend. Okay, that's pretty much what I have for um, other suggestions. Um, if people want to leave more in the chat or in the comments when you watch the replay of this, please do. By the way, if you are watching the replay, uh, hit a one and put that in the comments as well if you're watching this later on IGTV. A couple other things just to wrap up. I want to thank everyone for watching this live tonight. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, again, I'm Megan McNamara. I teach people globally um, about natural birth control and charting their cycles. So if you ever want more information on that, go to my link in my bio and you can explore working with me right there. And of course, I always welcome people to private message me. I love talking in the DMs and getting to know people and just kind of exploring that area with people. Um, let's see. I think I covered everything that I needed to. Um, my last thing is just if you enjoyed this, please share it with others. We really need women to support each other right now. A lot of people need to hear this message that... You know, they might have um, these, uh, these signs of stress showing up in their cycles, and I want people to feel supported in that and prepared for that as opposed to freaked out or even more stressed for something that they might not have expected. So please, please um, share this video when you get the chance with people um, in your communities, your friends, other charters, and things like that so they can also hear this as well it is so, so important. All right. I think that's it, everyone. I am going to go ahead and end this live. Um, I'm really going to try and post this on IG uh, IGTV, and I'm also going to attempt to get it up on YouTube as well if everything works out. So thank you again so much for coming out. I hope everyone has a great night. Really appreciated seeing you all and hearing your suggestions, and I will see you next time.